So which one exactly? In many communities like Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, I see daily requests on which printer to get, why this one, why that one, and answers all, all over the place. Instead of giving a straight answer, the correct approach will be to ask, what are you going to do with it? What are your expectations? Today, we're looking at how to choose the right 3D printer and don't blow money for the fun of blowing money. I'm Richard, this is 3D Printing for Money, the channel that helps you make more money with your 3D printer. Let's get down to business. So, first things first. If you're fairly new and you want to get a printer just to test that technology, a printer between 150 and 300 bucks is enough to print random things and some basic functional parts. At this price point, there aren't huge differences in capabilities. Some printers will be better in some tasks than others. Some will be easier to deal with, but at the end, they're all quite comparable. Many times the decision process is buy a 3D printer, test some materials, and try to figure out which products that you can do with that 3D printer. If instead you want to print and sell your 3D printed items, it is easier to choose the wrong printer than the right one. Why? Many suggest to get the biggest printer for the less money, others the fastest one so you can print more items in less time, and others just suggest the one they already have, bias it on the fact that it runs good for them. Instead of running after the last fad or listening to someone with different needs, let's analyze in more scope-centric way which printer to get. Step number one, choose a printer based on your production needs. Once identified the niche you want to work in, you can research which materials you will need, and from there, which printers will be able to print those materials. So if the wrong question is to ask, which printer should I get? The right question is, which printer will print these items? This precise question will immediately focus your attention if you need a resin printer, a big filament 3D printer, or a 3D printer capable of printing high temperature materials. It is a small shift, but makes all the difference. This way, you are thinking with the end in mind and will focus more on getting the right printer instead of reading review after review and watching video after video. Step number two. Once determining the need, you must find the right printer. A 3D printer is basically a machine that makes something. It can print certain materials with certain speed at a certain cost. The decision process must be product, material to make it, printer that prints that material with the best ROI. ROI is an important factor. It stands for return on investment and looking at a 3D printer as a tool, it is important to have the tool that ensures you the best ROI. ROI is a business parameter and it must be implemented with another feature. I call this feature the 3D printing ROI triangle. This triangle is composed by the capability of the printer, the experience required to operate it, and the cost to buy it and run it. Simplifying the concept, if you choose a cheap 3D printer, you will need above average experience to push its capabilities. If you get a very expensive machine, odds are it will be very capable and require you just to push a button. But how does this really help you? If in point number one we saw that you must get a printer based on your needs, this triangle will help you choose which printer to get based on your skills and your budget. If time is a used resource and you can't waste it tinkering, you will have to go with the push the button printer. Form Labs are famous for delivering exactly this type of products. You hit print and the machine does almost everything. If instead you are tight on budget and your experience is very limited, you will have to lean to a less capable machine. I'm not saying a bad machine, just a less capable one. Lastly, if you are a god in slicing, have huge knowledge in materials and deep pockets, what are you doing still here? Go assemble your DIY 3D printer. Using this triangle to assess your strengths, if your level of knowledge is high or low, or if you can afford an expensive 3D printer or not, in conjunction with point number one, you will have a bulletproof decision tree on which printer to get. 
But let's make a couple of examples, shall we? Example number one. You want to print drone parts. You are thinking mostly of guards and protection for the drone and its accessories. For these type of products, a soft material will do the trick. TPU and TPA and soft resins are viable materials. Now that we define the target product and the material, we can start to look at printers based on your current skills. Let's hypothesize you don't want to do resin mixing, you don't want to spend too much on flexible resins, and you are worried on sunlight exposure and resin toxicity. So excluded flexible resin, you're left with flexible filaments. Let's get for granted that you have some experience in electronics and hardware thanks to your previous FPV assembly and don't want to get wild with tuning your 3D printer. You need a machine that once assembled, it works. Also, for your FPV application, you see that you will benefit also from 3D printed nylon parts. Settled for these materials, you scout a little and find out that Aprusa NK3 does about all these things and has a huge community support. Recap. Flexible filaments? Check. High temperature for tough materials? Check. Reliability of the machine? Check. And voila! You found an almost perfect printer. Example number two, you love interior decor and want to print stands for electronic devices. You won't need anything fancy or particular materials and find out that PLA and PETG are more than enough for indoor use. You do some research, keeping in mind that you don't want to fully assemble a printer bolt by bolt and you're a little tight on budget. You see that there are tons of printers from Chinese manufacturer that could allow you to print PLA and PETG and you are not worried about surface finish because you're going to paint them anyways. Also, device stands aren't that big and you see that an Ender 3 or Artillery Genius will be more than enough. Recap, PLA and PETG, check. Budget option, check. Vast community support, check. Example number three. You are a prototyper and want things to get done fast, possibly overnight and your customers require a superb finish quality. You do some research and see that FDM printers has its limitations when factoring quality with time. Looking for alternatives, you stumble on MSLA resin printers. Doing some comparison, you find out that 4K screen's resolution is enough and fast printing time of the MSLA printing is alluring. Also, you don't mind post-processing, wanting the best possible outcome. So you end up choosing between a Peopoli Phenom and an Anycubic Mono X. Recap, fast printing time, check. Medium to big printing area, check. High detail parts, check. Keep in mind that these are examples and your situation can be very different. Let me know in the comments how you choose your 3D printer. I'm sure that these methods will make you look at your next 3D printer with different eyes. If you found these principles helpful, subscribe for more content that will help you in your 2D printing journey. This is all for today. Stay sharp, stay safe, and see you in the next one.